The Biden administration's immigration policies have attracted a flood of Central American and Mexican migrants to the U.S. border, including thousands of unaccompanied children. What's the administration's next move, and how could it affect national security? Joining me now to discuss is former Health and Human Services Chief of Staff under Secretary Alex Azar during the Trump administration, Brian Harrison. Brian, thank you for being here. On Wednesday, President Biden appointed Vice President Harris as his immigration czar. She's going to lead the effort to stem the flow of migrants seeking entry to the U.S. And on Thursday, he had this to say about people coming through the border. Listen. The vast majority, the overwhelming majority of people coming to the border and crossing are being sent back. We're sending back the vast majority of the families that are coming. We're trying to work out now with Mexico their w willingness to take more of those families back. Did the Biden administration move too quickly, Brian, to overturn the Trump administration's immigration policies, especially the agreement with Mexico that kept uh, people in Central America and in Mexico uh, as they applied for asylum? Yeah, I mean, they moved too quickly. They shouldn't have moved at all. We left Joe Biden and the Biden administration when we and the Trump administration left in January, the most secure border probably in this nation's history. And they went right away to destroying all of those successes that we left for them. Um, we, you know, they stopped construction of the wall. They ended catch and release. They tore up our asylum uh, negotiations we had made with Mexico, the Northern Triangle company, uh, countries. And then they uh, went at our Title 42 order, which is something that us at HHS had put in place, saying, you know what? We're in a full-on public health emergency here with COVID-19. The last thing, thing we want is uncontrolled thousands and thousands of illegal immigrants coming into America, also bringing COVID-19 with them. So, yes, uh, they moved too quickly. They, quite frankly, shouldn't have uh, have moved at all. They created this mess. It's 100 percent of their own design. And I guess I got to give him credit for it. It is a campaign promise uh, that he kept. You know, he campaigned on open borders, and, uh, and we're getting open borders, and Americans are paying the price for it. But now the president is saying he's sending Harris to negotiate with the, the Northern Triangle partners to try to keep these people to apply for asylum in their home country. Isn't that what we already had in place? President Biden I says am. you destroyed the infrastructure for those asylum, uh, asylum seekers in those home countries. Yeah, it, isn't it fascinating? Uh, we, we in the Trump administration and President Trump gets absolutely no credit for Operation Warp Speed, but somehow we are completely responsible for the, the Biden border crisis. But yes, you're right. When I heard... Uh, those words coming out of the president talking about sending the vice president to negotiate asylum uh, claims and the way they're handled in home countries, I, I had to pause and rewind the TV to see if I had even heard him correctly, because that was exactly what us in the Trump administration had done. We had completely already negotiated this, so we had redone the way asylum claims were made. If you want to come to America to seek asylum, that's fine. But we had these arrangements in place the day they walked into the White House. They scrapped them, and, and now they want to take credit for beginning to start negotiations so that they ultimately might get back to where we were in the Trump administration. It's completely baffling, and, and the hypocrisy would be comical if it wasn't so tragic. Hmm. During a press conference on Tuesday, Mexican President uh, Abordor uh, blamed the Biden administration's changes in immigration policy, including the change to the migrant protection protocols on the rise of the migrants that have overwhelmed facilities in the southern border in recent weeks. The Mexican president also argued, Brian, that U.S. support for economic development in Central America could get at the root of this migrant surge. He said people don't go to the United States for fun. They go out of necessity. There needs to be support for the development of Central America and the south of Mexico, particularly Central America. Now, according to the World Bank, 47 percent of Salvadorans 56 percent of Guatemalans, 52 percent of Hondurans are under the, the age of 25 and looking for work. Um, what else can we do to help their economic situation? I mean, we, 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 we offer a lot of financial aid to South and Central America, and I know the Trump administration did that. That's why they were willing to play ball on the uh, stay-at-home asylee program. Yeah, no, exactly. And look, anybody honest would acknowledge there are certainly both push and pull factors here. But let's not forget that we had completely solved one of those problems before the Biden administration came in. We had solved the pull factor, the incentive to have these families separate, the incentive to send the kids on these dangerous journeys, the, because of the belief that with Joe Biden's imminent, you know, swearing into the Oval Office, 
they would have, you know, a safe refuge and the, and the borders would be wide open. So we had solved one of those two problems for them, which would have allowed them an incredible opportunity to focus on the push factors, the, the, the economic issues that are destabilizing some of these um, Central American countries. But quite frankly, there's nothing that's going to help these countries I mean, if they're just losing a massive percent of their young, healthy and able-bodied uh, youth. I mean, they're, they're losing the next generation by trying to export those problems here to the United States. So mm -hmm. we're actually having the worst of both worlds under the Biden uh, hair open border policies. Brian, the administration has at least, at least 15,500 unaccompanied minors in custody, not yet handed over to HHS, I don't believe. Um, children are spending an average of five days in these facilities. More than 600 of these children have been in custody for longer than 10 days. Now, by law, unaccompanied children, as you know, are supposed to be processed and sent to HHS shelters within 72 hours. The Biden administration began accepting unaccompanied minors in the U.S. in February. Why? And does this policy need to be reversed at this point? Well, it absolutely needs to be reversed, and it's why I'm standing up. I think more people in America need to stand up. They're not going to get relief from the Democrats in Congress. They're not going to get even fair coverage from the media. So I stood up earlier this week and said, yes, they made that exception in February, but that exception to allow every illegal immigrant under 18 years old not only is terrible policy, it's flatly illegal. We, uh, we're supposed to be a nation of borders. Biden is hell-bent on undoing that. We're also supposed to be a nation of laws. And under President Trump, us at HHS, where I was his chief of staff, we used our public health authorities. We put in the Title 42 order in place that secured the border for all illegal immigrants, irrespective of age. They came in in February and illegally made an exception for every every illegal immigrant under 18. You can't do that. You have to follow a process. Mm. So I'm actually suing the secretary of HHS, my former agency. I'm suing the secretary of DHS, the director of the CDC, to force them to go back, adhere to the law, and secure the border and end this national disaster that they created. Brian, do you have standing? Are you worried that they'll throw you out because of standing? No, I'm not. I absolutely do believe that I have standing. I think there's several um, people that have standing here, my friends, neighbors, colleagues here in Texas, because it's not, you know, just a theoretical concept that I have. It, I am at increased risk to contract COVID-19. We're seeing it playing out in front of our very eyes. Carrizo Springs, uh, a shelter that they reopened after we left right. the Trump administration because we had excess capacity. We're seeing super spreader events because, get this too, they always called the Trump in, uh, administration inhumane because they hated the president so much. In the Trump administration, we had COVID protection protocols in place in these shelters. The same administration now that says that you can't have, you got to have shutdowns forever, you can't go back to schools, you got to wear one, two, and three masks, and you can't barbecue with grandma even after she's been vaccinated, is saying that, you know, let's just throw away all of our COVID protections in these migrant shelters, and it's resulting in super spreader events right here in my backyard in Texas. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Now, the president came out this week and said during his press conference, they're opening up Fort Bliss, which is a, you know, Defense Department facility to house these migrants, 5,000 beds. You all worked, I know, to close down the use of these military installations and to stop the, 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 the crowding at the border. Uh, is this just the new normal? We're going to open up all the military facilities and fill them with whoever wants to come in? It's absolutely the height of hypocrisy. In the Trump administration, you're exactly right. We had so solved this problem for them, that we did not have a backup at the border. We had excess capacity at Health and Human Services in the migrant shelters that were operated when I was the chief of staff there. Mm -hmm. And now, not only are they opening them, Joe Biden just got done bragging about Fort Bliss mm -hmm. and bragged that they were not state licensed. Every not state licensed temporary facility that the Trump administration even contemplated using was met with outrage and absolute mm -hmm. um, panic Horror. and protest by the Democrats, and including Vice President Kamala Harris, who went to herself and picketed uh, at a facility because it wasn't state licensed, and now she's bragging about opening 5,000 more non-licensed beds. It's unbelievable, the hypocrisy. The here. president also said, look, when asked, aren't you attracting these unaccompanied minors through your statement? And Joe Biden pivoted. He said this. The idea that I'm going to say, which I would never do, if an unaccompanied child ends up at the border, we're just going to let him starve to death and stay on the other side. No previous administration did that either, except Trump. Your response to that, Brian? Well, it's, it's fundamentally dishonest. I mean, it would be comical, again, if it wasn't so tragic. 
And joking about lives lost is absolutely not the place for a president of the United States or the media who are his willing accomplices here. These children were treated under the Trump administration with extreme humanity and care. And by the way, at taxpayer expense to shelter them and then to uh, conduct negotiations for how to safely transport them, again, at taxpayer expense, back to their home country, frequently with uh, the use of NGOs and nonprofits who would help make sure uh, they, they were, you know, repatriated back with their families. So it's absolutely dishonest. There's not a shred of truth to what Joe Biden just said. And I'll say this, too. If he's so concerned about kids on the other side of the border here between Texas and Mexico, he should reverse his policies because all his policies are doing is attracting more of them. They're supercharging the magnet that's incentivizing these families to send their kids on these dangerous and perilous journeys. So, no, no, no. there's nothing funny about it, and there's also nothing honest about it. Well, if you've seen these human traffickers up close and these coyotes, as, as we have, um, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cruel and awful thing to encourage these people seeking a better way of life, to entrust their children, their little girls, to these, these horrible people. And uh, th there's a lot of abuse happening that never gets reported, that's in the background of this whole story. Uh, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, I could go on and on. Uh, Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas was asked if the policy to allow unaccompanied children into the U.S. was changed too quickly. He, this was his response. The entire system was dismantled by the prior administration. There was a system in place in both Republican and Democratic administrations that was torn down uh, during the Trump administration. What is he referring to there? What was torn down? I have no idea. I watched some of that interview over Sunday, and I got to tell you, I don't think there was a single truthful thing that came out of the Secretary of Homeland Security's mouth. He completely beclowned himself in that interview. And let me tell you what we did do in the Trump administration, because the American people deserve the facts. We secured the border. We ended catch and release. We were building a wall. We negotiated asylum seekers to remain in their home country, and we stood up our Title 42 order. That secured the border. That ended the magnet of thousands of uh, mm -hmm. illegal immigrants coming to this country. And we gave them the most secure border in history, and they've done everything they could to trash that policy. Mm -hmm. But no, th there's not a single truthful thing. That he Questions have grown over the lack of transparency at the border as well, Brian, as the administration has hindered most efforts by outsiders and the media to document the conditions not only of the, the, the holding facilities for the unaccompanied minors, but of the basic facilities where, the, where uh, these migrants are being processed. Democratic Congressman Henry Cuellar of Texas released photos earlier this week, and there was very limited access to one facility. What do you make of the administration keeping officials, media, non-for-profit lawyers uh, from conducting any oversight uh, of these Border Patrol uh, tents and detention facilities? Well, you know, sometimes the obvious and the simple answer is also the true one. They're hiding. They do not want the American people to know the tragic conditions inside of these shelters. And let me tell you something else, too, because uh, we were talking about media hypocrisy a minute ago. In the Trump administration, um, we were extraordinarily transparent with this. And we allowed not just what the Biden team did, which I think after I don't even know how many weeks, so over a month of this crisis, mm -hmm. um, one camera to go through. Yeah. We had dozens of tours of our facilities. And on each tour, I think we had 20 plus reporters. So we had yeah. probably into hundreds of reporters that we let go through so the American people knew what we were doing in the Trump administration and the humane way we were handling the crisis while we were trying to secure the border, which we ultimately did do. Mm -hmm. Brian Harrison, I thank you for the insight. Hope you'll come back. This problem, I'm sure, is not going to go away anytime soon, and it's a humanitarian crisis. It goes on and on and on. Brian, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me.